Hello, everybody. My name is Jim Burnick from ICERTIS. And hi, my name is Matt Wolf with PwC. Matt, let's explore trends in distribution and insurance. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yep, absolutely. So I think when you think about insurance, it's a very, uh, it's a very differentiated market around how insurance is actually bought and sold. Um, historically, in personal lines, we've had a combination of what we call captives. Mm -hmm. So those are effectively a distribution channel that's controlled by the insurance company via an employee, um, as well as independents. And those are independents, and of course, they may work with multiple insurers. Um, on the commercial side, then, we also have the independent brokers, uh, and they tend to specialize in more of the large-scale risk. So it's a very diverse distribution channel. Um, typically, we see the insurers try to focus in one or multiple of those areas, but do it really well. Mm -hmm. Some of the expectations around how you engage in those channels is different. So um, sometimes we try to do omni-channel, but I'll, just like everything, we try to be good at one or two things, not everything. And so when you think about challenges, communication certainly you mentioned is one of them. When you think about it from a contract intelligence standpoint, in what the industry challenges are today. You, you know, for example, at iCertis, we have tools like Collaboration Portal, where these dist distributors could actually work within the same database. And, um, you know, they'd have their permissions, they'd have their rights, you could keep them from changing things that you didn't want changed, but they also could interact within the same I service environment without sending emails, contracts back and forth, or you know, saving hard drives and do all of that. So when you think about what would help them from a communication standpoint, any examples where they're going from an in industry standpoint and apply it to contracts? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So I think maybe two points here, um, and it's a little bit of, the, the, there's two different things going on in the market. So in personal lines, Historically, what we've seen is that a lot of the uh, captives, so basically the direct employees, they're now that's being transitioned within the carriers to more of a digital distribution channel. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is historically, where that was more of a, a direct relationship thing, they're trying to do like more direct to consumer um, for the existing agents that are that are in that channel. As you said, they're trying to use more technology to do better like direct placement um, and things even just like propensity to purchase making sure that the agent's being effective and as multiple submissions come in, are they really looking at the right people who are going to convert? Um, so you really need to digitize that data and then you need to apply AI and kind of, you know, more statistical models to make that more efficient. So a lot of the investment that we see is really in that area. It's how do we make that distribution channel more efficient? Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much what we see on the personal line side. On the commercial line side, it's still pretty heavily managed by the brokers. Um, the brokers don't necessarily want to integrate everything because they have to work across multiple different insurers and so they, they really want to do the right thing for themselves. Um, with that said though, when we look at tools like iCertis, using AI to basically do data extraction off of structured and semi-structured data, that helps automate a lot of that upfront basically counterparty integration between both, both the insurer and the broker. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's equally different reasons why you'd want to use a tool. It depends on which part of the market it is. But ultimately, it's really getting the, the distribution channel in the, broker, in the broker or the agent side to be running more efficiently than what they have today. Okay. And how do they manage obligations in distribution? So when there's a commitment, when there's an obligation and it needs managed, is it a phone call? Yeah. Is it a report? Is it a knock on the door? All, all, all of the above, <laughs> and it varies, right? So I think, yeah, I mean, I, when you really think about it, um, really good producer management capabilities in the insurer. It's obviously data driven, yeah. um, and so producers generally get managed by multiple things, right? They get they get managed they get measured by GWP. So how much in terms of top line revenue is being generated? They're also being measured by the quality of their risk. So they might be writing a lot, but if it's poor risk, then they're paying out a lot, and the claims ratios are poor. Um, and so all of that boils down into basically fixed and variable commission structures that that have to be paid by the insurer to the producer. So historically today, I mean, there is some data analytics pieces that, that are around that support some of those things. It's generally very after the fact, mm -hmm. it's very retrospective. Um, you kind of don't really see trends until it's already occurred and you actually look back. Um, and so it's, it's by no means a dynamic capability that most insurers have today. Really, again, understanding what is the contract, what's the expectation between the producer and the insurer around what they need to be meeting around KPIs and how are they progressing. 
seeing that data flow through via the, via the submissions and the contract terms, you can then compare it to basically how is that producer group actually performing, mm -hmm. and you can be much more proactive, right? So it's again back to the same themes of digitizing data that might not be digitized today, yeah. applying analytics to that, and then making the right decision at the right time. From a, from a contractual standpoint, when they onboard a new producer, a new dis distribution channel producer, what do they have to go through? Are there problems there when you think about a contract? Yep. So one of the important parts uh, in the insurance industry, again, very heavily regulated, um, the interesting thing is that the insurer has a regulatory burden right around their rates, rules, and forms. So they, the type of product and how they price it has to go through a regulatory approval. But on the distribution side, there's, there's equally a regulation to make sure that the producers are actually qualified and can sell. Um, there's, a li there's a licensing model across all 50, 50 states plus one um, where you basically have to be licensed in the right line of business. What that does is that actually creates a regulatory burden for the insurer because it's up to the insurer to make sure that the producer is licensed. Um, and there are lots of cases where that may that have they have fallen through the cracks. Maybe they weren't performing that sufficient due diligence, and then they can get regulatory fines. So again, using a tool like an Isertis, where you can basically do you can basically see the inflow, you can actually see the licensing, you can see who can actually write what and when. Um, these are all critical parts to making sure that when the submission is actually coming through, that that's something that you can actually bind an issue. Thank you, Matt. If you'd like to hear more about how you could better manage your distribution channel, please contact us.